What is going on everyone? This video is about what all the default import statements do when you create a brand new glue job. This video assumes you have a basic understanding of what AWS Glue Service and Spark is. So if we create a brand new boilerplate glue script, which I did here on a Jupyter Notebook on AWS Glue, I don't know about you, but it seems pretty intimidating that there's six Python import statements in the AWS Glue scripts already. All right, so let's jump into explaining each one and how they are leveraged by your glue job. All right, so the first import statement we see is import sys. So we need this library to obtain the sys.argv method, which is the list command line argument passed to a Python script. So each glue job comes with a list of default arguments, and it is a parameter in the get resolved option method that we're going to be using later on. So without importing the sys library, the get resolved option method will not work. We'll come back to talk about this one soon. All right, so the next import statement is AWS glue.transform import star. So we are importing all classes from the transform base class, which contains all the AWS glue created transform classes to use in PySpark ETL operations. So as you can see from the list here, there are 24 classes at the time of making this video to help with the ETL process. So these classes are meant to be applied to the dynamic frame in an AWS glue job. Moving on to the next one. So we see from AWS glue.utils import get resolved option. This is the method responsible for reading glue job parameters. So if you want to pass parameters with the start of your job, you're going to need this method. It is also required for the AWS glue bookmark feature where we'll need to include the job name parameter. So if we run RGS is equal to get resolved options, bracket sys ARGV with an empty list, we can see the default parameters that this method has by default. We can also add custom parameters to the job by doing sys.argv equals plus equal sign and then two dashes with the parameter name followed by a string with the parameter value. So now I'm going to add the job underscore name key into the empty list for this method. And now you can see that the job underscore name now appears in the ARGS variable, which is a dictionary. So another import statement you're going to probably see is pyspark.context import spark context. So Spark Context is an entry point to the PySpark functionality that is used to communicate with the cluster in order to create an RDD, which is a resilient distributed data set, and also to broadcast variables. So as you can see here, part of the boilerplate code, we are calling a get or create method and passing it to a variable called SC, which is then being used by the glue context class in the line below. All right, so the next import statement is from AWS glue.context import glue context. So this glue context class wraps the Apache Spark Spark context object and thereby provides the mechanisms for interacting with the Apache Spark platform. Well, why do we need this? Well, it allows us to interact with data that is uniquely stored on the AWS glue service or in the AWS glue ecosystem. So as you can see here, we're passing the SC variable to the glue context class. Now this will allow us to create data frames from S3 or from the glue catalog. All right, so for the last default import statement, we have from AWS glue.job import job. So the purpose of the statement is to use the job.init at the beginning of the script and job.commit at the end of the script. These two functions are used to initialize the bookmarking service and update the state change to the service. Glue bookmarks won't work without calling them. All right, now that we have our glue context class initiated, we can go ahead and create a dynamic data frame from our data, which is a parquet file in S3. So if I use the glue context.create underscore dynamic frame from options and then passing in S3 and then the path of where my data is, the file format, and if it comes with headers, and now just adding a print statement to see the count. And if we give this a run, we now see we have 15 records and I can go ahead and add another statement. So now on our data frame, we're going to use the print schema method. And if we run that again, we now see we have three columns part of our data frame. All right, now we're going to go ahead and use a transform from this transform library. So we're going to go ahead and drop the order ID field. So I'm going to now create a new data frame called edited data frame, and we're going to use drop field and we're going to add dot apply. So the first parameter is going to be our dynamic frame that we're passing in. And then the second is going to be path, which could be a list of columns. So we're just passing in this column, which is order ID. And now if we apply dot show to our edited underscore DF data frame and give that a run, 
you'll now see all the records within our data frame and we now have the order ID that has been dropped after applying the drop fields class to it. All right, so I hope you found this tutorial helpful in explaining why we need all these import statements for our glue jobs. Thanks so much for watching and please consider subscribing if you're new to my channel for more videos related to data engineering and AWS glue. Thanks again and see you next time.